What's up, Straight Up Sister Squad? It's your girl, Roxy. And I'm La Susie. And together we are Straight Up Sisters, the podcast. I'm the bratty. And I'm the boss. And we love having those deep, intimate conversations where we often agree and disagree, but still love each other. So if you love it served up with no chaser, then you're in the right place. We are undoubtedly your favorite girls. You know who we are. Straight Up Sisters, the podcast. Y'all, oh my God, we have officially added our newest Straight Up Sister Squad member to the crew. She came a little bit earlier than what we thought. And um, yeah, it's, it can't get realer than this, sis. You know, <laughs> breastfeeding live on the show. Like, you know what I'm right, saying? Yeah. Psych! <laughs> just practicing. JK, we're just practicing. <laughs> so silly. You know what? Oh I may gosh. do a couple of shows like that where the baby is actually breastfeeding because we were just talking about what is know, this gonna look like you know what i was just what I've been is reading this gonna look like so many articles on pregnancy and just motherhood and bonding with your baby and like the importance of bonding with your baby is is it, it's just like a highly importance the first well, of course six months they call actually Didn't the first. Annabelle say that the first nine months actually. So they 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 talk about like how postpartum is like another nine months, but those nine months should just be used for like bonding and latching and oh my god, just there's so much information out there about childbirth to the and, end. Yeah, and it's so funny because I was sharing with my mom all these resources and these classes and lactation classes and birthing classes uh, both of us think it's silly hypnotherapy classes you know like that's hypnotherapy yeah there's a hypnotherapy class for for, for birthing what? and basically all it it focuses on is breathing like believe it or not uh, is me, that used to be called lamaze no it's not like lamaze it's basically where you're able as a woman to get yourself to a meditative state during labor where you are completely relaxed during labor. Like, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be intense, but through the intensity, through the ring of fire. Have you heard of the ring of fire? Only from Johnny Cash. No, <laughs> but have you heard of what the ring of fire the is? The ring of fire. But do you know what it is? No. Okay, so the ring of fire is that moment when the baby's crowning, and it's, like, burning, and it's, like, some women. Who told you that? Look it up. I experienced it, the and I don't remember the burning. Look it up. Look it up. Look up. The but ring. I'm telling you that I've experienced the vaginal birth unmedicated, and I don't recall any burning. It's because there's I'm not so... saying that it doesn't happen to some women. What I'm saying is I don't recall that. Yeah, It sounds a little dramatic. Well, it's because everybody experiences childbirth differently. That Maybe I do Maybe that's know. what Johnny Castle was singing about. Maybe. The ring of fire. Yeah, maybe he he thought his wife was gonna die, but there's women that they say that that when when the when the baby's crowning, it's called the ring of fire, where you're you're in so much pain that you feel like you are gonna die. I don't even remember Hannah like acting over excruciating pain because I was watching the baby crown and it's very lubricated. Yeah, and the nurse was there with her fingers, like helping the babies like maneuver the head out. Like you have help, yeah. I, listen, let but me also she did have an epidural. Let so with an epidural, you feel nothing from the waist down. Let me tell you, there are a lot more horror stories on birth and labor than positive stories. So what I've done is I've focused myself on the positive stories because if I sit there and watch all the negative stories and people right away want to tell you their negative experiences during labor. People want to tell you their negative experiences in life, period, and just all like, the time. I, I, Why? I've had to stop women. Like, I don't want to hear that. You know, thank you for sharing your experiences with me. Like, especially when I go to, like, the chiropractor's office and it's, like, all us pregnant girls there. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. Do not. Do not. Starting off season Do not 14. start with me. By the way, we are. I was about to say, you just jumped right into your. We are. Shenanigans with a paper towel. Kicking off season 14 yes. with this episode. Yeah. Snaps, snaps. Man, 14 seasons in already, sis. Good listen, job. Listen. Good job. High ring five. of fire face. Wow. <laughs> I look like a ring of fire. <laughs> ring of listen, fire. Listen, I just want to say I woke up this morning feeling a little petty. 
Okay, because, there's nothing wrong with that. No, I know. I'm, I'm going to celebrate my pettiness right now. Good. So I was thinking, like, wow, we're, we're kicking off season 14. We have completed one full season behind a paid wall on Patreon. And to all the naysayers, to all the people that were boohooing or talking shit, trolling. To everybody that, that can hear this work. on Apple oh, Podcasts. That's why I'm doing this right now. And so that Spotify. Everybody listening on, on the free content version on Apple Podcasts. To all the people that Apple, didn't see. Apple, Apple Podcasts. Apple. I'm classy. <laughs> I'm a classy petty bitch. <laughs> to everybody that had something negative to say or that instantly assumed that our content wasn't worth paying for or that we were going to fail and they were actually pre-celebrating our failure. Like, hee-hee, hee-hee, <laughs> joke's on you because here we are. We we expected the audience that we got to follow us to Patreon, and they did. Yes. We've retained them very, very well because our content is great. It is. And to everybody that the quality don't wanted change, us honey. to fail, like, the joke is on you because here we are starting off Another season on Patreon. We're just winning, bitch. We're yeah. Just winning. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on. Back to the Ring of Fire. I have to tell you. Oh, my gosh. Let, let me just. I got it up on Google. Crowning is often referred to as a ring of fire in the birthing process. It's when your baby's head becomes visible in the birth canal after you've fully dilated. It's the home stretch in more ways than one. So, yeah, it's referred to as a ring of fire. And, uh, I believed you. Yeah, I okay, didn't I just, need all that. Yeah, but I just wanted you could because uh, you know my mom is like, wow, there's so many resources out there. She's like, I don't remember. First of all, knowing the, there wasn't anything. even the internet when my mom was having. She's kids. like, I don't remember learning any of this and uh, nothing about breathing, nothing about nothing. Y los tres me salieron bien. And I didn't I'm do like, the Maz. I didn't. I had great nurses though. That were with me. Thank God I was blessed to have a great crew with me. Yeah. And then, I mean, but Robert's dad and I, we were just winging it, bitch. You know what I'm going to do? But it was do? still a great experience. Somebody gave me a really good tip. You know what I'm going to do with my nurses? Somebody told me to buy like $10 gift cards for Starbucks. Yeah, I've heard To that. butter up your nurses so that way they just cater to you and take care of you. Mm -hmm. And then you can also fire your nurses. Mm -hmm. If you, my doula was like, if there is a nurse in your space that is just not, it has like stink energy or just like, ugh, like you can I fire her. If anybody has ever experienced an, a horrible nurse. I feel like you could even fire delivery, your doctor. I feel like labor and delivery nurses have a different energy. I, mean, like, it's I like, feel like they're loving and they want to be there. Like what a beautiful job you have. Right. You help bring life to this earth all day, every day. But, I mean, it's like, I wonder if they look at it as, like, is it a beautiful job for them or are, is it just a job? Like, this is what I went to school for and I'm here and I'm having a bad day today. I know some people have probably have horror stories. Oh, my but. God. We want to know, straight up, Sister Squad, in the comments, have you ever had a fire? If you're a mom, did you ever have to fire your nurse? While you're in active labor. Because you can. And Why and would you fire your doctor? Up to this point, you know who your doctor is going to be. No, because, no, let me tell you, because... Like, for example, my doctor, she may not be on call at that time when I go into labor. You could what do you try mean? to you could try to schedule because doctors are on call. They're like groups of eight in the labor and delivery. Oh. And so you could try to schedule it, but you just never know when the baby's gonna come. So if your doctor happens to not be on call or that shift, you you're you're gonna get whatever doctor's gonna deliver. Really? You. Yeah. But oh, you you I've could try to schedule doctor. it, you know, but 70% of women do not have their kids on their due date. Mm. You know, it's either like a week before, a week after. So it's, you hope that you get your doctor, but if I didn't you have know that it was a possibility not to. Yeah. But if you go in on a day where it's like not their shift and they're just doing office visits, you could probably get somebody how else. How many doctors, I mean, I wonder how many patients a doctor takes on, like an OB. I wonder how many pregnant patients they have at any given time i wonder if there's a cap i'm sure there is i'm sure know. there is but anyways i've been going at the i've been seeing the doctor a lot because you know when you're in the home stretch it's like every week every other week you got to see your doctor and it's just like man you're almost there i'm almost there five more weeks i'm almost there honey five more weeks that's Google. right that's right okay, okay so rant or highlight you start no you start rant or highlight you start i started I'm the show starting Second. Okay. 
Um, my that rat, made no sense. My rat or my <laughs> highlight. Um, okay, so I had an amazing, beautiful baby shower. You did. It was so beautiful. Shout outs to everybody, my friends, my family that showed up. Like almost everybody RSVP'd. I have the reputation, y'all. I have the reputation of throwing the best parties. And so everybody RSVPs. I don't know, but you had the most amazing MC. Oh my God. Oh, Where did yeah, you find no, that? Shout out to my great. sister. Shout out to my DJ. Shout out to like the venue, the Rust and Sheet Company, Sandra, my planner. Oh my God. It was just, it, it was just very stress free. You know what 100%. I mean? 100%. We're like, I just showed up. And I, I want to give that piece of advice to anybody. If you're planning something big, you know, like a bautismo, anything that's big in your and that wants to get celebrated in a big way, hire a planner. It is so much easier, easier, and there's like the stress levels low. I didn't want any like I, I don't like a lot of stress in my life. Yeah, I'm very intentional was, with that. It was easy for everybody. Yeah, you know, like Mel and I got there a little bit earlier to deliver some extra things, like the pictures you had blown up to set up the games for. The, to set up the baby shower games and whatnot. Those games were so fun. It was so hard to do games with that many it people. It was so many we people We only there. did three. We only ended up doing three games because it was just too many people. You ended up only doing three out of 11? It was like 10 games. Oh, my God, Susie. My favorite, it wasn't even a game. It was just like something you did. Susie had these cards that was like advice. Oh, yeah. Advice for Roxy and then um, a love note to the baby. A love note to the baby. They just to be able to read those. I read those like two days later, and I'm not even done with them. Yeah, but it was so. And you could read those over and over again. I'm gonna save those. And then the babies, you save them, and she could read them later on in life when she's older, and she could know who was at her shower, how long people have known her, what they wished for her. I didn't even write mine. I was so busy with everybody, but I I have the template. I'm going to write them. Oh, my gosh. And then some people, I realized, I went to my baby shower house, some sloppy-ass writing. I'm like, who wrote this? You don't see the signing? I, yeah, the but they wrote their, like, legal signature. I'm oh, like, wow. print your name. I know. Because some people gave me good <laughs> advice. That is so funny. And it's like, ter- I don't know who's, who it is. Didn't you love the late night diapers, too? I haven't read those yet. Yeah, don't read them yet. I haven't read those yet. But those are really cute, though. If anybody needs baby shower coordinator idea, no, no, baby, no. holler I'm at baby Susie. shower coordinator. We're not adding that shit to my resume. <laughs> no, but no. that was a really thoughtful, like the diapers and the advice to Roxy and the advice of the baby. It was so It's a cute. love note to the baby. A love note to the baby, yeah. It said, dear baby. And then yeah. you write to her, like, I hope you always, I hope you never... Always remember. And, yeah, and it was like, I hope you get blank from your mom. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I hope you get your mom's smile. I hope you get your mom's grit for life. I hope you get your mom's um, determination and confidence. Mm-hmm. I hope you get your mom's, um, it was just all like, yeah. like I hope you get your mom's personality. It was it was just really cute stuff to read. Like, oh my God, I would have never thought this person would have wrote that. Yeah. Or this person really knows me. That's what I thought. <laughs> I thought that was going to be so cute and encouraging. Yeah, it was. Encouraging for you, encouraging, and then just a shit ton of love for the baby. Yeah. So, yeah, my baby shower was epic. Like, all the vendors. It was just such a good time. So, shout out to my friends and my family that went and just showed up. You know, showed up for me. And it just felt like a big-ass reunion. Well, I mean, you had people from all stages of your life. I mean, I had one of my homegirls pull up from Houston. One of my cousins flew in from Florida. I mean, one of my girls drove in from Tijuana. A lot of industry people that you yeah, work with. Yeah, a lot of my radio colleague friends. Like, it was just, it was, I was so happy. Like, I felt extremely, extremely loved, like, to the point where, like, I felt overwhelmed loved. I was like, oh, my God, y'all, like, it was so much love. Yeah. Which is the way you're supposed to feel Absolutely. on your baby shower. And, yeah. and stress-free. And that's something I think that culturally we don't emphasize enough. We feel like we can do it all or that we have it all under control. So as the host, or let's just say if we didn't have the planner, it would have probably been me and my mom. You would have been stressed just out. Me. I would have missed out on the whole party. Yeah. Because I would have been making sure that everybody was fed, that everything was cleaned up, that, you know, things were stocked and restocked. When you hire somebody to help you do that, yeah. you don't have to worry about those things. You get to just enjoy. Yeah. And it's worth every 
freaking scent. Yeah, it is. We even had a little coffee bar for the older people. That I are... mean, she thought of everything. Yeah, she did. She really so thought of everything. So we had a everything. bar. We had a coffee bar. We had a dessert table. We had tacos. We had tostilocos, churros, paletas, games, games outside for the kids. Sam- a ton of photo ops. Like Everywhere. a ton of photo op activations. Like she thought of everything. Yeah, if you guys want that venue, location, and name, just DM us and we'll give it to you guys. But yeah, that's my highlight, y'all. I'm still feeling the love for my baby shower. And you're and, still opening presents. And I'm still opening presents. It took two truckloads to get all those gifts home. And I have I have to say something. We've gotten so many DMs and messages on Patreon inquiring on where people can send you presents. Yeah. You don't really need anything. Oh, my God. I have so much. So I think that. I think maybe just I diapers. My idea, you don't even need that. You have you got a lot of stuff. No, I but you know what? A lot of people told me not to buy too many diapers either for newborns because the baby's gonna grow so fast. Yeah, you have enough for newborn. I do. I, the all the ones that were written on the diapers, uh, late night diapers, those are all newborn. So all the other newborns you have, don't open them. Okay, and take those back and yeah. get maybe like a size one or two. Yeah. But what I was gonna say was, I think I personally think, but of course it's your idea, and you could think about it. It's, I mean, it's your decision. If it's gonna add one more task to my life, I it's a no. I think that it would be really a good idea for you to find a woman shelter, women and children shelter, and have our patrons that want to buy you a present instead donate to that shelter in your but name. But they want to give me a gift. But your baby you know, you know what I need anything. No, but there are babies out there. You know and what she does need. That do you know what she does need? More books. I want more bilingual books for her. So send me a book so we can add it to her library. Who wants to do all that donating? And that's something else I got to do and go donate all this stuff to a woman's shelter. Not that I don't want to do it. They could ship it directly to the shelter. How many of you guys think that's a good idea, Straight Up Sister Squad? And how many of you guys think that that's just another task? Even Austin back there thinks it's a great idea. Well, then you could deliver the whole truckload, Austin. Raquel, they call... Direct, there's a website. You set up a link or a website, and they donate directly because your baby is super blessed. Oh my god! Your baby, extremely. Listen, 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 Linda. Raquel's daughter has already outgrown her closet, and I she is not even here. here yet. So your daughter, great, thank God, doesn't need anything. I know, but there's so many moms and babies out there that do. So I think that's a great idea. Me too. Would you like me to you help want, you find? You want to set that up? Okay, <laughs> I will. <laughs> Since it's your idea, I just think it's such a dope. No, it is a idea. good idea, and it you is. can make a donation to that shelter or whatever it is that I find in your name. Yeah, in honor of your daughter. Yeah, and that's that is a, a good dope idea. Way to pay it forward. You know, your daughter is blessed. Thank God. Yeah, and and spe- this is not my highlight, but I just want to touch on your on your highlight. So. We one of the vendors was called Awas, right? And yeah. They, they hosted uh the bar. It was open bar, Such a fresh dope bar. Awas. They were making cocktails with from fresh Awas, beer, wine. It was a vibe. So she, I posted up uh, you know the three sixty photo booth. Yeah. I posted one of Ariel, Vic, and myself, and it was like we were having fun, you know. Yeah, those three sixty photo booths are fun. Yeah. So the lady from Awas, Vero, she was like, uh. Oh my gosh, like your babies were so cute. And I, 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 she DM'd me and I said, Oh my gosh, they probably kept you so busy because you tell somebody it's an open bar and they had the paletas locas. Yeah. I know the kids were going back and forth getting aguas, getting sodas, or getting paletas. paletas, you know? She's like, I have to tell you something. I recently listened to the podcast of the, what we spoke about, not, not calling our children spoiled, spoiled but like blessed. we don't consider our children to be spoiled, but blessed. She said, and I've said something then after hearing that podcast, I've, I've adopted that to that mindset. She said, but I was able to witness that. She said, your, your kids are such are, like the babies in your life. They're so well behaved and polite and considerate, but you can tell that they expect or are used to abundance. She said, and it was so dope to see that you guys really live the things that you talk. Yeah. And I was like, thank you so much for that observation. Like, it means a lot for people to see that. Like, yeah, we're not just up here doing lip service. Like, we speak what's on our heart and we speak the things that we live, you know. And yeah, we we walk the talk. We don't consider it to be our kids are spoiled. It's a blessing. Major. 
I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's super important for people to see that. But, oh, my God, it was just so fun. So, yeah, just I'm just so thankful to God and to life. And, man, just... What's your highlight, sis? Well, you girl, got you got a rant. Speaking about blessed, no way, Jose. This girl just came back from Belize. vacation. Did you love Belize, girl? Did I tell you, girl? Girl, this feels the love vacation was lit, like capital L I C. So lit like, that your still- phone got lit. <laughs> <laughs> My phone got lost, drowned. <laughs> that vacation from beginning to end was just a. One huge adventure, ITA curated the most dope experience for Mel and I and our guests that traveled with us. Belize is like a diamond in the rough. It's very untouched still. It's not a fancy place, but it has so much to offer. So much to offer. Yeah. We were in Belize City for the first night, just Mel and I. We were, we met a lot of cruises come into that place. So we met people that were on the cruise, made connections, networked. We ended up in San Ignacio. That's where we spent the first three nights. From there, we did one day in Guatemala. We forfeited. I saw uh, that. Yeah, we forfeited one of our free days because, you know, IT usually yes. gives you like two free days to do whatever you want. So we forfeited one of our free days when I realized that we were actually one of our travelers, Martha, she she made a comment on how close we were to the Guatemalan border. So I told Santiago, I was like, hey, after we did San Antonich, the Mayan ruins in San Antonich, I said, Santiago, can we go to Guatemala for dinner? Not thinking fully. And he was like, for sure. Did you guys bring your passport? No. No. He was I, He was like, well, we can't go. If you that guys is don't have so passports. dope. Can we go to Guatemala for dinner? Yeah. So he was like, I said, okay, if we can we forfeit our free day tomorrow and make it a day in Guatemala? He's like, is your is your group down for it? I have to tell you, I had the most downest group, like the most downest group. It was like Panama was super fun. Belize blew Panama out of the water. Like oh as we go gosh. on these vacations, they're just going to get better and better. Yeah, of course. So I mean, isn't that what life is about? Yes. Life should get better and better. So we Oof. I said to the group like, hey, listen, I overheard you talking. We can't do Belize for dinner. I mean, Panama, Guatemala for dinner, I said, but we can. Santiago's checking in to see if we can do it tomorrow. Are you guys all down? Yes, yes, Everybody yes, across the down. board. Within an hour, Santiago had come back to me. He was like, this is what I can do for Guatemala tomorrow. This would be the itinerary, and this is would be what it would cost. Because, of course, you have to get transportation yeah. in Guatemala. I sent out a group chat to the, the to the group. Everybody was within minutes. Everybody had said yes. Girl, we were off to Guatemala. So the, the we had to push our itinerary back one day. So then the following day was our last day in San Ignacio. We did the cave tubing, which is fucking magical. Super fun. That's the Mayan underworld. Yeah. It was so beautiful. We get there. So when I went to Belize, a couple people were freaked out with those cave tubings. Was anybody in your group freaked out? No. I mean, you have, like, light on your yeah, helmet. Yeah, and you have a light vest. I think it's because people kind of imagine, like, what's in that water because you're it is it's, dark. But it's clear. But you're on a tube. Yeah. You're not, like, no. swimming through this My water. My crowd was down like my group that traveled with us was super down so we get though to where the cape tubing is happening and we're, we're traveling in a van right because there's a lot of us yes so a big ass stretch limousine rolls up it's an older one obviously but it's like an suv limousine right yeah. so i take a picture of it and i was gonna send it to santiago to bust his balls so i told anthony what's i mean it's there randy our, our guide I such love a dope guy but he's like better belize it. yeah i was like Randy, what's up with this? I said, why are we traveling in a van and these people are traveling in a limousine? And he was like, don't let, what did he say? Um, don't let look full, don't let looks deceive you. I was like, who and came out of that limousine? White people. Like, yeah. well, I mean, it doesn't matter their color, right? But just it was a bunch <laughs> well, of white Well, obviously folks. it does because yeah. you said white people. Like, it was quick. a bunch of like white folks, like super tan. They were having their best time too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But he was like, don't let looks deceive you. I was like, Okay, that's what he left it at. So we go to to where they're giving you your helmet and your life vest and you and your get tube. your tube to go cave tubing. So now and I, there was a person there that was directing. I thought that person worked there, but I guess there's like different guides with different groups. So we picked up our tube, Mal and I. And then Randy was like, put your tube down. And I was like, the guy just told us to pick up a tube. And he was like, put your tube down. VIPs don't carry their own tube. And I was like, Oh, and he was like, your tubes, your 
group, Fields to Love is VIP. So your group's tubes will be up there waiting for you. You get to just enjoy the walk through the jungle and the rivers we're going to wade through. Mr. and Mrs. Limousine over there, they had to walk all that distance carrying their own tube. And that's why he said, don't let look to see you, you know? yeah so our team our group was like we don't have to carry our tubes and i was like oh sea <laughs> randy said okay we're vip so no so we walked through the jungle we walked through like little like river pieces of river it was hot so we would go swimming in the river to walk through it we would cool off and then keep on walking it was such a dope experience oh my god belize is like very underrated yeah That's when i when i realized when i was there I was like, this place is so beautiful. It's magical. And it's like, you want to go to Belize because it's underrated because it's not a lot of people there. No. There was people when I went to Belize, well, I don't know how many years ago I went, but there was people like, where is Belize? Yeah. I and got I'm that like, a lot they're like, is, are you in Europe? I'm like, it's in Central America. Yeah. It's actually not that far but from us. But it's not a Latin country. I know Their it's not. Their national language is English. Well, they speak they were, like a patois. Well, no, they speak English Creole. That's yes. exactly what it's called. Which tell me why Mel was trying to talk like that. I was like, Mel, Mel, no, this no, it's because this ain't it. There's some <laughs> people that go places and they grab the accent grabs onto them. And some people are just Mel, like that. Mel was just talking really oh my fast God. and really broke. I was like, stop doing that. He was like, what? He like, probably just caught that on ain't to it, him, babe. That no, he did not. He was doing that on purpose. He thought he was. I got he, he was talking like them because Randy would break off talking like that to like his people because it's just how they talk. That's how they talk. So they speak English, um, English Creole, and then there is some Spanish, especially when you get to the island. We went to San Pedro. That's oh, that's the ended. part of San, that's the part of Belize that didn't go. San Pedro. That's a lot of people don't realize that San Pedro is that song that Madonna like Mad- La Isla Bonita. A lot of people don't realize. I fell in love with. Yeah, they, yeah, she's talking about yes, Belize. and I could see why. And when she wrote about it, when she wrote that song, that was way, way long time ago. Yeah. It's very much developed now. But even so, it was from the minute we touched ground. So I already knew this, but I just didn't tell the team. I knew that in San Pedro, you need golf carts, that they don't have cars because one of my coworkers went there. I assumed that ITA was going to pick us up somehow. I didn't, I don't know what I assumed because I knew there wasn't cars there, but it didn't connect the dots. So I was telling Mel, hey, when we get to San Pedro, we have to make sure that at some point we rent a golf cart because I want to take the ride from San Pedro to Secret Beach. So Santiago overheard me and he was like, Susie, don't worry, we already took care of that. Every, every couple gets a golf cart. It's already taken care of for you. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't tell my group that though. So when we get there, Chris meets us there. Santiago went home, and then Chris greets us um, in San Pedro. So we're there. We're meeting him. The couple that a few of the couples that traveled with us to Panama knew Chris already. So it was like a little reunion, just a vibe from the minute you get off this boat, yeah. right? So we get there. I, I don't know because I didn't go to San oh, Pedro. You have to go. Yeah, next time I go to Belize, I gotta go to San Pedro. So there's we like, stayed in in Hopkins and Belize City. So there is a oh so you never left the mainland no oh, okay so we went to Belize City, San Ignacio, Guatemala, San Pedro, K Cocker. We yeah. visited five different places. Yeah, in this vacation. Your, ours was a lot more like relaxed. Like we did a lot of stuff, but it was a lot more just like not that much movement. It was the but, oh I got to relax a lot over there. That we've been on it, but but my group was fun. And yeah, that matters too, you know. So we get there, and there's bellboys already there waiting for us, putting all of our luggage into our golf carts. So everybody was like, wait a second. Like, everybody gets a golf cart? I was like, yeah, surprise. Girl, it was like we were mobbing down this little ass street to San Pedro one after another. One of the couples had a boom box. We, we were just living. Living. ITA I love that. has such a way of tailoring these vacations and of course like a couple strip is probably not as lit as a single girl strip yes it is but it is lit in its own way yeah you know because you're with your person i feel like a lot of times people think single girl strips is like you gotta be wilding out and but i, I feel like my seeing my girls that go on these trips they're 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 about like they're not about like being at the club every night and getting Sometimes they go out though. Drunk. I mean, yeah, but it but but they're ready to go the next morning for yeah. the next activity. Yeah. Like it's not about 
like Rosarito days where you oh, would no. just like get I'm too old blacked that out. And it's like, I feel like it's mature women that come on my trips and we're, it's like, we love to travel and we're like ready for the next adventure. And it's like, we keep it grown, classy and sexy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Super fun. And then I conquered a fear. What? I went oh, snorkeling yeah, I know in the ocean. And the, oh, I love the ocean. I love to be on it, on a boat, or I love to be near it. I love the ocean. But being in the ocean is terrifying to me. Because For a lot of people. Everything that is in that water can breathe underwater, and I can't. And there's animals in there that are much larger than I. And it yeah. just terrifies me. But That's actually a big phobia for a lot of people. Girl, I did it. I went snorkeling from where our boat anchored all the way to the Gr Barrier Reef, the Grand Barrier Reef. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Like, I can't even explain. And there was, like, sharks, but they were laying low. There was rays all over us. Tons of life underneath there. It was so... Amazing. Yeah. I'm so glad. I thought that was Shark and Reef and, and Ray Alley. Well, it wasn't. So we get on the boat, and I was, like, telling Chris, I'm like, man, I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud I went in there. And there wasn't even as many sharks as I thought. And he was like, he started laughing. He's like, that wasn't Shark and Ray Alley. I was like, oh. He was like, we're going there next. I was like, oh, fuck. Did you jump into the Shark and Reef yes. Alley? But I had to convince myself. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I probably would have had to convince myself, too. Yeah. So Mel, of course, Mel's the first one to get suited up, and he's in there. And so how they get the sharks' attention is, first of all, they're nurse sharks. So nurse sharks are not known to, like, attack a human. However, why? However, you're in their why habitat. Why before I left to Belize, there was a news that said that a nurse had just been attacked by a nurse shark here in the States. I so saw when, that. So I did when Chris see that. told me there were nurse sharks, that's the first thing I thought of about. Of course. But I was like, okay, no. It's so no. crazy how the mind, the mind of the subconscious mind works, right? Oh, like it, my gosh. It will, pick up, it will bring back that memory so quick. So Mel, he's suited up. He jumps in there, doesn't think. Anything. So they throw sardines into the water. And these sharks swarm. I mean, swarm. And you and have to throw yourself in there as they're... And they're in there. So Mel threw himself in there like nothing. And I was like... Babe, are they pumping you? Like, are they rubbing up against you? Are they slimy? He's like, nah, it's cool. He's like looking in there. I was like, okay, so I'm next. They, the guy suits me up, my snorkel gear. He's like, okay, ma'am. He, so you have to sit on the edge of the boat with your feet facing the water. He's like, okay, all you have to do is jump. And I was like, okay, right, smiling. And in my head, I'm like, okay, bitch, all you have to do is jump. Like, it sounds so easy. It's like that moment when Selena was about to bungee yes. jump and he, the, guy, the guy goes, the hardest part is letting go. Exactly. I had a Selena moment right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm so, so I'm like gosh. talking to myself and I'm like, all you have to do is jump. Because nursing sharks look intimidating, dude. They're huge. They're huge. They're huge. So I was like, So hey. you jump in and then? Yeah, I told myself, I was like, you did not come this far to just sit on the sidelines. Oh, bitch. no. Like, you can't let's bitch go. out at that like, point. Like, let's go. It's like it's like skydiving, and then you're up there, and then you're like, okay, jump. And you're like, no, no. You're no. like, I got to do this. I I was like, here goes nothing. Like, biggest fear is the ocean and sharks. And I was like, okay, I'm going in. And I jumped. I closed my eyes because you submerge a little bit, and I didn't want to be face-to-face -face with the shark. Oh, my. Because, like, of, they... of course, they knew La Susie was jumping in. No, but I was like, And they're they like, let's go face-to-face -face with La Susie. What if? Did you never know? And I don't know if they could sniff fear either, right? So I was like, let me just close my eyes, and, and I'll do this when I'm ready. It was already a big win that I was in there yeah. with the sharks. So I'm on this side of the boat, and Mel has already swam to the other side. And I was like, okay, okay. So I'm swimming without my head in first, and I get to the side where Mel's at. And by that time, all of our other guests had already gone in the water and we're all swimming and everybody's like looking in the water and i'm like why is there's even a video of me like why is everybody looking in the water because that's so what you had your gear on look. but i didn't want to look yeah. and see all the sharks but then i did i i was like bitch come on like get it together so i stuck my head in the water and i started to float on my tummy and there was sharks but they mind their business they don't want they don't care about you they just got a belly full of sardines they're not hungry if you think about it they're around you but they're minding their own business big oh ass stingrays God. just swimming underneath me just like in <laughs> their territory it was Good job. amazing and then i have no footage of it because my phone 
Oh my God. But guess what? I don't care. Who cares? But I you know have what? this memory. That memory will forever. forever live in your head and you'll know that you conquered that fear. Ah, I'm so, I was so happy to oh do it. Oh my God. That gosh. vacation was lit. Mel and I, Mel already told me, he's like, we have to come back here. Yeah. We have to bring another to group anybody back here. that has never traveled to Belize, that is a, that would, that would be a beautiful place to like renew your vows. Oh, for sure. To go relax just because it's so untapped and so many people don't know about Belize. So in Belize, in San Pedro, they're on golf carts. No cars. On Cape Cocker, no golf carts, just bikes and walking. Ooh. So I told Mel, when we come back, I want to do the itinerary a little different, and I want to spend two nights in Cape Cocker because it's so, signs everywhere. Go just slow. easy going. Yeah. Go slow. Everything is so beautiful. Beautiful. I cannot wait oh to my go God. back with I'm... another group. And for all the people that second guess everything or – hesitate and then sit there and be like oh i wish or oh my gosh this looks amazing i should have quit doing that to yourself yeah like be an active participant in your life quit letting opportunity after opportunity and moment and memory slip by you and quit living vicariously through people on their phone when you can do it too yeah especially if you have the capability of getting a passport and yeah. truly like there's people that cannot travel because right. of immigration status and and daca and it's real right. they can't travel they are stuck but if you can and you're just sitting on some like i don't want to get on a plane i'm so scared and fear is ruling your life like let if you're gonna get anything from this show let this be a reminder of like get over that shit Get Seriously. over it. Start to live because in esta vida, it's only one shot. That's Life it. Life is so temporary. Yeah. Like so, so temporary that it's such a disservice to not live it. Yeah. Like we were intentionally like what a made to intentionally live. And so many people waste that one opportunity, at least in this lifetime. And I think a lot of people listening to this podcast are waking up to that. Like, damn, you're right. You're right. Oh, my God, I'm getting it. Little by little, Susie. Little by little, Roxy. I'm catching on to that. And I actually wanted to start off season 14 on a really positive note. Because what you hear a lot is all the time. Tell me you don't hear this, right? And and straight up sister squad. You hear all the time, like, girl, look out for the red flags. The red yes. flags are everywhere in relationships and friendships. The red flags were there. You chose to ignore them, right? But nobody's really talking about the green flags. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I love green lights when I'm driving. Give me greens. I'm like, hell yeah. I just want to go and go. Red is mean. Red, flashing red is warning. Red lights is stop. But there right? are green lights. And there's a there lot are. of green lights. So many green life. lights. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about. Being able and learning how to recognize the green flags when it comes to friendships and when it comes to relationships and when it comes to life. Yeah. So many people are focused on the red. And when you focus on something, it Multiplies. becomes bigger and, and that's all you're able to see. So I'm sick of it. I'm sick of everybody talking about the red flags all the time. I'm not saying not to pay attention because you definitely should if they're there. But let's be honest. Sometimes... We create those red flags because of our own toxic traumas. Yeah. So I want to talk about that today. So coming back, Patreon, we're going diving deep into how to recognize the green flags in life, relationships, and friendships. 